Logic Pro has a lot of golden gems that most people don't know about. Heck, I've been using it for close to 15 years and there are still things that blow my mind that I didn't know. I'm gonna share 10 Logic Pro tips that most Logic users don't know about but totally should. Number one is enabling track alternatives. This is huge because let's say you record a ton of vocal takes and now you have a take folder with several takes like this one right here, this chorus lead vocal. We have four takes. When it comes time to edit, it's definitely the best to edit in a consolidated or flattened track. But if you flatten that track folder, then it's gonna delete the other takes which you probably won't want to do so here's the better way and that's using track alternatives to enable this you're going to control click on this track you're going to scroll down to track header components and at the very bottom is track alternatives when you enable it you'll see right here we have these little arrows and if we click on that you can see we can create a new one we can duplicate we can rename rename by regions and such but what we want to do is actually duplicate this and what this is doing is actually making it so that if we go to a this is actually a completely new track alternative. So with the beauty is we can rename A, we call this takes, then we can go to the second one, which is B. We can name this something like edits. And now what I can do is I can actually flatten this track. And if I ever wanna go back to the other one, it's very easy to do. All I have to do is go up here, go to takes, and boom, you can go back to all those take folders, go back to edits, and it's now the consolidated or flattened audio. So basically what you're doing is you are saving all of your work and you can create as many track alternatives as you want. Number two, speaking of alternatives, you can also have project alternatives, which is absolutely brilliant. This allows you to create additional versions of your production without ever having to open up a completely new project. So say I wanna take this production, which is a fully produced track and create an acoustic version. I don't need to create a completely new session, and instead what I can do is use project alternatives. We're gonna to go to the top bar in Logic to file project alternatives, and I can create a new alternative, so I could call this acoustic, and it's gonna create a new version of this. And now you can see up here, we are currently on the acoustic one, so it'll automatically send us to the new one that we created. And from here, if I ever wanna switch back and forth, I can go back to file, project alternatives, and you can see, hold your breath, which I might wanna rename that to produced version. This is also great if you wanna be having various mix revisions without losing your work. So you could have mix one, mix two, mix three, and you can actually create all of those as new project alternatives instead of having to have new sessions. Number three, freeze tracks. How many times have you been working with sample libraries and your computer decides, nah, there's too much happening, it gets all glitchy, and your computer just does not have the juice to play back properly. What you can do is you can right click on any of these tracks. So let's just do strings, for example. So I have these violins here. You can control click and then go down to track header components again. And this time we're going to go to freeze and enable. And now you can see this little snowflake icon right here, which is freeze. If we click it and enable it, it's gonna turn green. And once we hit play, it's gonna run through and actually essentially memorize this track. Now the disclaimer is that if you wanna actually start editing and doing anything with the track after you freeze, you will have to actually go in and disable that if you wanna edit. So really you should only be doing this when something is completely finished. There's a freebie for you if you wanted another way of doing this. Number four is using summing track stacks. Not only does this allow for better organization, but this allows for bus processing in a much easier to use way. So you can grab all these vocals, for example, and these are all vocals for the chorus. Do control click, create track stack, and you wanna make sure that you have summing stack enabled and then create. So I can go in here and call these chorus vocals. And from here, now I can actually add processing to just this track folder, which is actually really just a bus. So anything that is inside the summing folder is gonna be processed here. So I could use compression or I could use EQ, reverbs or delays or anything that I want. I'm still gonna use the normal way of processing with buses, but I use those in combination with the track stacks together. Number five, this is a pretty simple one, but also really useful, and that is enabling fade zones. If you're working with audio, whether it's vocals, drums, guitar, bass, or whatever, the best practice is to add fades at the beginning and end of every single audio region to prevent any potential pops or clicks. But rather than having to go up here and actually select the feed tool, instead you can make it so you don't need to do that at all. And here's how. You can do command comma, which is gonna open up your preferences, or if you don't wanna do that, you can literally just go up to here to logic, preferences, general. You're gonna to wanna to be in your general preferences. Go to editing and make sure here in the middle, pointer tool and tracks provides, and you have a couple different options. You're gonna to wanna to make sure this fade tool click zones is enabled. So from here, what this allows us to do is if I go to any individual track, zoom in here, if I hover over the top of the audio, so if I'm right here in the bottom half, it's gonna be the bracket, that's not what we want. But if we go to the top half, it now converts into the fade tool automatically. Now we can obviously adjust how big that fade is. Now from here, we can adjust how the fade slope is, whether we want it like this 
or this, we can do all sorts of fun things. In most cases, you're gonna to wanna to have it just very, very small. However, you cannot do this with take folders. It has to be with a single audio file. So if I go to this take folder right here, you're gonna see I'm hovering my mouse and my mouse is not converting into that fade tool. So you would have to go and do what we talked about in number one, which is create a track alternative and then turn that into a single audio file that you can then add that fade. Number six, since we're talking about fades, you should totally know that you can actually slow down or speed up any audio using the fade tool. So if I create a fade, let's take this bass part right here that we've got. Okay, and if I put a fade here at the beginning, make it kind of big, and then if I control click, you can see that I now can give this option to speed up. Watch what this does now. It actually changes the color of that fade and watch. Boom, gives you that kind of a cool sound. And then just like with any other fade, we can change the slope like this, which will do it faster or like this, which will kind of slow it up and ramp it up. So you can obviously manipulate that quite a bit. And on the back end, if you add it at the end, I've already got this done here. Again, you can see I have slow down enabled on this fade it will actually slow down that audio. So check this out. And you can see how this sounds in the context of this whole track, it's awesome. Die. Really sweet. Number seven, have you ever wanted to change the tempo of your song or have a part slowed down or sped up, but you still wanna use the metronome and actually control how fast or slow it goes, like that transition. Let me show you how. You can automate literally anything in Logic, but this is a bit different. If I wanna slow down the tempo of the entire track, what you're gonna to have to do is go up to the global track settings here, click on that, and normally it's gonna populate. I've already hidden some stuff, so in this case you don't see tempo as an option, just do control click. You can see tempo, click tempo. Let's go ahead and make this a little bigger. And let's say that I wanna slow down from 86 BPM down to 70, hypothetically. I'll put a click on where I want it to start and then click on where I want it to end. So 86 right here, this is where the slowdown will actually start and we'll do it over the course of one bar. And then we'll slow down to 70, bar, bar 27, it's immediately gonna go to 70. However, if we wanna actually slope this and change how fast it does it, you can see this little dot right here that's hollow. We can now move this and we can adjust the actual tempo. So now, this is probably gonna sound super weird, but. Run for the and then it's gonna do that. Obviously in this case, <laughs> in my track, it's not gonna work. So if you wanna add a little bit of a retardando, which is just slowing down over time and then speeding it back up, that's how you're gonna be able to do that and you're gonna have a ton of control over the speed or rate at which you do that. Number eight, you can sample literally anything inside of Logic. You could do a vocal, percussion, literally whatever you want because Logic has its own built-in sampler. It's called Quick Sampler. So to do this, what we're gonna do is create a new MIDI track, software instrument, and then go down to Quick Sampler. It's right in the middle. Let's just do a stereo file, create, and this is what it looks like. So what we can actually do is we can load up, record, or drag audio directly inside of this plugin. But I could do this again and drop something like a snare sample, for example. Why not? Optimized. Now obviously the pitch is gonna change based on this, so I can turn the key tracking off. And no matter what note I play, if I have key tracking off, it will always play the exact same pitch. So in this case, this is gonna make it so much easier than me dragging individual drum samples into the actual timeline or arrangement window and then like copy pasting, copy pasting. But instead now I can actually record this as a MIDI track and it will trigger that particular sample. Of course, there are other ways of doing this, but it's built right into Logic, and so I find this very useful. Number nine, if you've worked with buses in Logic and you want to automate the volume of those buses, you probably know how frustrating that can be because the auxiliary tracks or the buses don't actually appear in the arrangement window, which is this big, nice window right here where everything is located. So what you're gonna need to do is open up your mixer window and then go find the aux track that you want. In this case, we'll go to aux one. I've not labeled these yet. This is just a vox reverb. So if I wanna actually pull this into the arrangement window, then we're gonna to go to the automation part right here where it says read. And as you can see, this is grayed out. We're gonna click the power button on there, boom. And now just like that, we can see it populates inside of the arrangement window. I'm gonna move this all the way to the top because the vocals are at the top for me. Now from here, if I wanna actually automate the volume of this, I now can. So check this out. So if we go to the beginning of the song, for example. Waiting for darkness, darkness to come. 
So on darkness to come, I might want that reverb to actually go up in volume. So what I can go is go into here to auxiliary reverb, open up my automation. And now what I can do is actually bump up the volume uh, just like that. We'll see how this sounds. This will probably sound a little over the top, but we'll kind of see how this sounds. Darkness to come, a hide in the shadows. And then I might want it to end right when that vocal starts. So by doing this, I've now actually increased the volume of this reverb. So the reverb is now going to ebb and flow with the song. So watch this now. Darkness to come. Now that might be a little over the top or dramatic, but I think you can get the point. So by pulling the actual bus into the arrangement window, I have a lot more control over how I can automate this. I can do all sorts of automation in here. I can even put other EQs or other effects on here and automate those right inside of the actual automation window. There are so many different things that you can do with this that if you're just a little bit creative, you can actually do some crazy automation with different buses. So really try to put your creativity hat on for this. And number 10, having your own custom presets can be super valuable. While I don't mix with presets, I certainly produce with them. For vocals, for example, I have a couple different presets that I created for when I'm tracking vocals. So they sound a bit better than raw when I'm recording. Now I undo all this after I'm done producing and once I move into the mixing stage, but it's really helpful to click one button and be ready to go for recording some vocals. So to actually create a preset, here's how you do it. Let's go ahead and just create a brand new audio track right now just for the sake of it. So I'm just gonna kind of add a random string of effects in no particular way, but let's just say I wanted an EQ and I want the EQ to automatically have, you know, this setting here. This might be somewhat similar to how most vocals would be. I could add a compressor on here, different threshold, which I'll need to adjust once I actually get my vocal in. And then let's say that I even want to add something like fresh air. Okay, cool. And then bump some of that up. And there you go. So I just have three plugins on this. Now to actually turn this into a preset, I'll go to settings and click on settings. You have to hold your mouse down. And then we want to go to save channel strip as, and you go in here. So I'm going to call this airy vocal, for example, save it where it automatically asks you to save it because that will actually put it to where it'll populate as a preset. Click save. And then now if I go to my settings again, you can see down here, airy vocal. I can click on that and then boom. Obviously you can create as many different presets as you want for different situations. And you can also share these presets with any other Logic user as well. So heck, if you want to create your own presets pack or something, that's how you can do it. If you like these 10 tips, then I guarantee you're gonna love hearing what the top 10 Logic Pro stock plugins are right here. We'll talk soon.